Nga loe lau mali a ho ei ki pia malo e lelei e tonga katoa pe. A very warm greetings from Langima Oceania Counseling Service to our parenting through COVID-19. And in acknowledging also the um, Foundation North for sponsoring this program. And this evening, it's a special edition that we have this evening that we have um, Mr. Dipiloma Uhila as well as um, Emma Uhila. Um, it is really the first, the first time that we have had a couple that comes from different cultures, that their parenting style would be, I assume, would be very unique and probably um, different and similar to, to many that will probably listen to us um, this evening. But I will give you the opportunity, um, Diploma and Emma, to please introduce yourself to our audience um, this evening. Thank you. My lolole, everybody. Um, my name is Emma Ohila. Um, I am a fourth generation Kiwi born here um, in Auckland. I grew up um, and moved to the UK when I was five. So I spent most of my childhood um, over in, um, in Kent, in Tunbridge, and then moved back here and did the rest of my schooling and high school in Auckland. And then um, met Loma when I was 25 and the rest is history really, um, yeah. Mm. everyone. Um, mm. Uh, Kolo motu a uh, mo lapa mo kapuna wa uh, sinbata mo soloi uhil uh, mo sen folau funaki pa mo seni fare funaki. Um, greetings, my name is Loma. I'll call me Loma Uhila. Uh, it's good to be on the show um, with you, Sani, and also to uh, hopefully shed some light in a uh, in a few things that we do that might help uh, our parents out there during this, uh, during this uh, situation that we're in. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. And a very warm welcome to you into the space though. So I think I would like to actually hear from, from you, um, Diploma and Emma, because you come from a different um, cultural perspective, uh, cultural um, background, and now you're actually having children on your own. Um, would you please share with us how do you parent your children um, from two different cultural um, background? <laughs> you start. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I guess going back to the very beginning, obviously one of the things that first attracted me to Loma was his culture and um, how beautiful the Tongan culture is because um it's such a big part of what makes you you um as a people or as a person um so i knew that obviously lama's tongue and culture meant a lot to him um so really right from the beginning in regards to parenting it was about having open honest communication about being you know what's important to us both and where we see ourselves and what we want for our children so mm -hmm. from the very beginning it's always been about our beliefs who we are who we want to be what we want our children to endeavor to be and um where compromise comes in because obviously there is differences um mm -hmm. sometimes it hasn't always been smooth sailing we've you know had to negotiate some quite you know big topics um right from birth up till now mm. um yeah yeah I, I think just to add on that Sani um what Emma was saying I think the biggest thing was 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 compromise um as Tongans or being Tongan the culture is real strong and also um I think the lucky part for me is that I married out of the Tongan culture but still try to hold on to the Tongan culture and the beauty about that is we get to I get to we get to pick and choose what we accept and what we don't accept not in terms of um, a positive or negative it's in terms of what would work in our family and then you know and if that works then we'll go with it but if it doesn't work 
the compromise has to come into play because I can't just go, right, that's it. Kids, we're all going to the Tongan church. We're not going to mum's Catholic church. We're all going to mine, you know, you go to Nana, Nana Fussy's church. So it, it has to fall in line to what work, what works logistically, what works from a parenting point of view, but also has to work with us as well. And yeah. and I think compromise is, is the word that's that helps that. Yeah. But but it's it is um almost the best in both worlds, but just making sure we don't label it as positive and negative. It's just like, oh no, that works for us. You know? Yeah. Mm. And I think also um it would be very interesting also for the audience to hear like how many kids do you have? Because I think that actually plays a big part in the way you parents, um, in the age range of your kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, I, I just remember now I didn't yeah. hear that as part of your introduction. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the, the reason why we're here. Sorry. So I'm Emma and I'm a mum to nine beautiful children, um, including one singleton and four sets of twins, um, all under the age of 12 and under. So um, we've made it through those baby years and we're just approaching the scary teen years so um you know we we say we're sort of semi-professionals of the baby stages but we've got a long road ahead um which we're navigating because you know parenting in this journey is always uh a learning curve there's you know it's and i think that's also when we talk about communication and compromise it's identifying that okay something's not working if it's not working and uh, what can we do where to next because mm. if you just you know carry on doing something that's not working it's pointless, pointless. You know, you're only going to get the same outcome so it's being able to you know identify that but yeah, yeah. nine children nine children if you guys can see like i've got a photo at the back there oh so beautiful these, uh, there you go beautiful. <laughs> mm. and they're not here at the moment so they're just um they're just uh outside <laughs> okay is that why it's actually so quiet from the background yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and i i guess it's a it's a it's quite a skills because mm -hmm. there's actually like the set of parenting that was done to you mm -hmm. as a person growing up like mm -hmm. for you emma growing up um in britain mm -hmm. Yes. And you, Loma, were you growing up in Tonga, Loma? No, here. Our oh, first five years in Tonga and then... So you migrated here when you were five? five yeah. And mm. Emma left New Zealand when you were five? When I was five and came back when I was about 13. When you were about 13. Mm. So there's obviously like a geography um, environment in terms of the impact of that on your parenting as an individual. And also that you have to weave in that differences together with the cultures at the same time. That is such a skill to do that. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to give us an example? Because I hear the word compromise, compromise. Would you be able to give our audience an example of what kind of things that you guys were compromising? Yeah, I think just to start. You're not looking at negative, positive. Yeah. You're looking at what is going to work. Yes, and to right. have four sets of twins, <laughs> you know, I give it up to you, folks. <laughs> I give it up to you. I've got yeah. four boys, and yeah. that is my cup is overflow in parenting. <laughs> I had no idea how you made it for four twins, but it would be lovely to hear like an example of of that compromise to make it work. Yeah, well, just like how Emma mentioned before, we're kind of like semi pros in the baby stages from zero to our oldest is twelve. And we're embarking on the like the next phase of, of our, our kids um uh, development in life but i think the first five years was probably one of our hardest in terms of compromise because when we look at compromise like in terms of culture we had our routine and like the tongue culture with the church the gatherings and all that for us we didn't even take our kids to church we didn't even take because the routine didn't fit you know if if baby was to have a nap at 12 o'clock in the afternoon that nap had to be we had to stick to that religiously regardless of where we were and so for the first five years of our children like they had we hardly went to church because we had to keep up with all our kids because we at the time we had like five under 
five under three years old, you know? So like, so it was kind of like, okay, yes, we do want to abide. We do want to participate in the, you know, going to church and meeting, but at the same time, we kind of, you, you forecast that, okay, what are the consequences of having tired babies, hungry babies, sick babies? So we kind of put that to the side and compromise of like, yeah, actually we won't stick to that. We're going to change it to this routine because it helps and it fits with us. And again, that will go through pretty much everything that we 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 kind of like everything that we did. So if we were invited to barbecues and I was like, oh sorry, um, yeah, our baby's got a nap or, or whatever. You know? Always leave early, yeah. um, or you know, early-ish. And as time's gone on, obviously the routine, there's room for movement, but in those early stages when they were under five, it was. We would still go to things, but yeah. if it was in the evening, we'd get home by 7.30, 8 o'clock because there's nothing worse than five overtired, yeah. really grumpy children. And then the follow-on ripple effect the next day and then the next day, and it accumulates on top of each other. Mm. Um, so it was always putting their needs first over our needs, I yeah. guess. So... Um, you know, yeah. they well, needed sleep, they needed food, they yeah. needed this, and so our what our we needed took a back step. Yeah. So another example was when we had our, our family reunion a few years back. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too sure if you can remember. Um, Sunday we had a big family reunion at Camp Morley, yeah. where the night activities was way past my kids' bedtime. And I was like, man, and in my heart I was like, oh, I want them to mix and mingle with all these little cousins and all that but the bedtime was 7.30. And I was like, going oh. and then we had to stick to our guns because we couldn't just go, oh yeah, sweet. Let's just let them enjoy the week and this, you know, and enjoy their cousins. But then the same time, at the same time, we, we had to relook really ourselves and go, so we've done all of this just to break it here, you know? And again, so our kids, they knew, no, they, they knew nothing else but their normal routine. So the routine that we had at home, played when we went on, on on a camp setting so 7 30 they already knew and their body their body clocks were already tired they're like yep bedtime and then they went to bed and then that there can be hard at times when expectations like oh where's your kids oh how come they're not here it's like an, um they need their sleep they need their water they need so and, and it trickles down to, to, to what they eat and how they eat when they eat and like the water so just looking at our, at our babies and our kids now, it's like, going, well, if we if we didn't make those hard decisions, it, it was hard then, but now you're looking back, you're kind of like, going, oh man, actually that was quite good because it, it, it plays a part on their development because we've got to remember that as babies, they're always developing. They don't, actually as humans, we don't stop developing until we're 30. But if you don't get the initial development of nutrition, yeah. water, the first sleep, five years, the first five years of your life, that's very right. crucial. Yeah, very crucial. Yeah. And um, I'm just thinking, because if I remember right, Loma, that you do have a background of being in the army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've got a, a military background. Um, yeah, about twelve years, so twelve years, but. See, a lot of people ask the same, well, if, if, we're, if we're going down that line of, oh, it's because he's from the military, that's why they're like this, this, and this. And, yeah. I, and I keep saying, nah, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I don't, like, for me, it's like, no, actually, it's not really from the military. Well, it, can, it has certain aspect to it, but when you look at that, the pros and, well, no, sorry, I won't say pros and cons, but, you, but when you look at what you want to achieve by sticking to the routine, then you know, okay, sweet, it's a must. We have to, because we don't want, um, <laughs> to say, we don't want tired kids because they don't develop snotty nose kids because they get sick more, you know, and, and when you have all those things compacting on your, your kids' development, their learning becomes like this because they're too tired. Their, their attention span is out the window because they're too tired or they're hungry or not eating the right food. So understanding that from an early onset, was quite a, quite crucial for us to actually go. Wait, hang on. We got to feed our kids of love, nourishment through food, sustenance that's proper for them to develop. But again, they always go, "Oh no, it's because he's in the military." I was like, "Oh, they no, can't. We can't. You can't box it to that because that's only a small bit. There's only a small bit mm. of of, um, of of parenting." And I guess, in a nutshell, parenting is different hats at different situations and knowing what to put on and what to take off. You know. Mm. And I think also, I mean, obviously for us, it's hugely different to 
other people, you could probably get away with having a not so rigid or strict routine if you only had one or two children. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we are outnumbered and we have been for some time. So it was also, you know, it was about the best way that we can manage. Um, and yeah, like I said, if you've got one tired, hungry, you know, tantrum throwing child, you can deal with it. But if you've got five of them, going off at one time it's sort of so you do your best to avoid situations that are going to prompt that and you know you know um as parents you live and learn um yeah and, and and it's very interesting as well because i i've interviewed dr foliaki mm. in the space and the uh, one of the things that he talks about is having happy children mm. Happy children. And it's something that I remember that camp that you're talking about, um, Loma. Yeah. And yeah, all my kids were out and about um, <laughs> at that camp. But I had a great admiration for your children. Oh, thank when you. it's actually bedtime, they all went to bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And um, watching them the very next morning, mm -hmm. you know, they yeah. were not tired, they were happy, <laughs> they enjoyed the games. Yeah, and it was beautiful to watch the the happy children. And I continued to watch your children mm -hmm. on Facebook how they sing songs, and yeah. it, it is so admirable. It is so admirable. That makes me actually have to ask you the question of how do you look after yourself as parents? Because mm -hmm. you, yeah. you know, um, for especially for the mothers, I should say. Mm -hmm. Of course, the father as well, but yeah. but for the mother, um, when the mother is actually well, they're able to nurture well children. But yeah. do you guys have tips on how you manage to have time for yourselves? That the parents who are listening to us can actually learn that yeah. you make that time or however you do it. I think it's well for us. It's taking or being grateful for the moments that you do get that I think we live in a world where you know we're so people's lives are opened up um, with social media and you see only the good things generally of other yeah. people's lives um, and you know the, the holidays and the this and the that but I think for us it's always been the communication that you don't need a lot to have these moments and yes while there's a lot of things that would be really nice to do and have and 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 we do get time out and get to go out for dinner and things like that but it's actually like the little things of mm. in lockdown we've been doing some um volunteer work and we get a couple of hours on a friday where it's just loma and i in the car and we deliver parcels um and that's to us like a date day mm -hmm. where we, you know, it's the communication. It could be going to the grocery store, us two with mm -hmm. no children. That's, you know, as sad as that sounds, um, is, is mm -hmm. that time for us to, you know, make mm -hmm. sure we're on track that, you know, if there's any concerns we have and, and especially with Loma's mm -hmm. job and mm -hmm. before lockdown working away, it's keeping that communication open mm -hmm. and at, and also adding to that, it is hard for mums. I think fundamentally mm. as a mother, the yeah. biggest having children, and this is again, just my viewpoint on it. Um, we are the ones that sacrifice the most. Like yes, fathers obviously hugely, you know, sacrifice a lot too, but mm. as mothers, we, it's natural instinct to, almost and like long, when we talk about it like it's you know going to the animal kingdom a mother is there she's fierce she wants to protect her child um so I think we do give a lot and it is so important to look after ourselves but it's the way that we look after ourselves mm -hmm. um yeah it doesn't have to be you know we put a lot of emphasis so I think social media does in this day and age of the self-love talk mm -hmm. um and it's you know going out and you know getting your hair done and all those things are really nice and we're allowed to do those but it's also um 
you can do self-love and it's the way you, you know, it's, it's church. It's who you surround yourself with, um, mm. what you talk about, your own inner talk. It's all those things too. I guess just to add on that one, for, for, for men, all right, actually, I won't comment for men. For me, it's easy. And then that's just like, it's, it's easy in a way, but hard to accept sometimes because I smell. So again, talking to myself, but again, in general, and, and, and making sure that I, I speak from a point where, okay, I've been down this track, which I have, but then now realizing, man, if we don't play a part as a husband or the dad in terms of um, supporting mum or supporting the, your, your wife and partner with the kids, then things will just snowball. And when that snowball happens, then you know the outcome after that is well basically has a um, a ripple effect all through the family so if mum's tired so like the little things if mum's tired you know it's i i get to i guess i'm what i'm trying to say is it's the little things a dad can do around the house that'll probably mean more than the fancy present after two weeks of going whatever you know it's the i don't know i'll hang up the washing or come on kids I'll take you out for a walk and you know mum stays home on her own and just has that space but I can remember one when early on on on, um, on our parenting phase our moments of of um looking after ourselves was like we had turns taking like five to ten minutes on the back stairs with a cup of coffee and just like breathing and just like yeah you know just to recharge and then back into it and then when you back into it, okay okay what needs to be done okay those nappies go there you know and it's the whole from there and now we're at a position now where our kids go to bed at 7 30 and they're like and we now we get we get to watch movies all night and you know talk and discuss stuff you know we don't have kids start staying up till like 10 11 o'clock where it's kind of like well hang on you're not 16 or 17 yet you're still under 12 so off to bed you go and that comes, and that stems from the hard yards right in the beginning, you know, setting those routines yeah. and actually having those little compromises right then because our kids, they're just sponges. They know nothing different, you know? And if you start <laughs> start creating stuff that you think, oh, no, that's not going to happen, and you know, that's not going to work well long-term-wise in the family goal or whatever it is, then you're going to go, oh, no, we better cancel that out because it's only going to snowball when yeah. years to come. Yeah. One of the most frequent questions we get asked is, oh, or, or assumptions, I guess you could say, is, oh, bedtime must be horrible in your house. And I'm like, bedtime bliss. is bliss. Bedtime's bedtime. And everyone knows. I mean, there's the odd time where, you know, they'll yeah. be in there and they'll, you know, talking away. But everybody knows it's, it's mm -hmm. time for bed. And there is no ifs or buts about it. It's you know, the day is being done, we've had a great day, and it's about, yeah, the routines of, um, we've always had prayer, you know, like the routine before bed, um, so everybody's on that same page, and they know those expectations, and yeah, yeah there is wriggle room now, we do let them out late every now and then, and yeah. or have movie night, and yeah. um, but yeah. within reason, because again, the next day, our kids never sleep in, so they're always up early, regardless of with how late they've gone to bed. So, yeah. Hmm. Wow. I do actually talk to you, um, you to Emma and Loma with a great admiration. Thank you. Because of that discipline that you have put in place. And it's a, it's a, it's a huge sacrifice because like what you said, Loma, before, and the criticism that comes with it. Mm. You know, like when we're not on the camp, everyone is asking, where are your kids? Mm -hmm. you know, and then next minute you hear them say, let them come and enjoy themselves. Yeah. It's a family, um, yeah. you know, it's a family reunion. Why are they going to bed? You know, yeah. but, but you know, uh, like what you said, there's no ball that it's gonna roll over yeah. and you don't wanna deal with their consequences. So that was a great courage that you to have to be able to, to raise up these nine beautiful children. Mm -hmm. And in me saying that, um, from a personal and professional level, what advice would you give to, to parents mm. in terms of building healthy relationships? 
you know, because when I hear you, Emma, says that when it's bedtime, it's bedtime. That's a healthy relationship. And we all know because we have kids occasionally <laughs> two or three will protest, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe one at times, but for the whole of them to actually know bedtime is bedtime. Yeah. Um, that actually comes from a, a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Th that's how I see it. And also, how, what, what is your advice for parents on how to build healthy relationships and even communicating? I hear you two talk a lot about communication, mm -hmm. not just between you two. You also talk about communications between you two, you and your children. Mm -hmm. And, um, and communication now it's actually locked down mm -hmm. here in Auckland and also other places. It's just different levels. Um, and how do, what is your advice for people, for parents? How do they build good relationships or healthy relationships and communicating with their children during this lockdown? Um, well, for us, I mean, lockdown it, and for many, I'm sure it's, definitely been a roller coaster ride yeah. um there are days where it's been absolute pure joy and bliss and especially when the sun's out um you know we can all have those moments where you know we feel grateful that lom is home that we're able to um he's actually here um and we're yeah. able to see what our kids are learning and what they're doing um lockdowns definitely also had the other side of of the coin where um, we've struggled and we've struggled in the parenting realm, the kids, because the kids are struggling, um, mm. especially, you know, with the looming Mondays and, and finding out where we're going to be at and, and what the, what the next, um, stage is. But I guess every day we're just taking each day at, at a time. So, um, doing the best that we can in that day, um, and not looking too far forward some days the kids are really motivated they want to learn they're wanting to get into their um you know the homeschooling and then there's other days where as a mum, I can see they're tired they're over it everyone's had just you know far too much device time um mm -hmm. devices is a huge thing for us um you know we'd rather them personally be outside playing um be getting creative um and we've gone from you know schooling where they're around all these people and they're getting all these interactions to sitting on a device at home for three hours straight um so yeah. well I, th I think just adding that as well like coming back to like the practicality of what what it's like in lockdown like for us like when they're schooling for some some for majority of our kids our schooling would just go from nine to twelve and then that's it. There's nothing else after lunch because it's outside time and put the devices down and get out and get some fresh air and, you know, and enjoy the sun if it's not, um, you know, if it's not raining. But it does, like Emma said, it does come to a point where you just kind of have to adapt to however the mood's going. You know, if there's, if the schooling's not working, okay, sweet. No schooling today, then an adventure, let's clean up the house. Then will be like, I want schooling, <laughs> you know, so it's like, no, I want school. Okay, which one? Schooling or clean up the house? Or, whatever, you know? or let's go walk the dog or, or something just to, just to re-energize and back into it because it does get to a point where our kids will just, you know, you know your kids are on devices when the living room is in a shambles and everything's quiet, which is some of the traps that some, like most parents, not most, so, so some parents fall into is like, okay, Keep them occupied, give them a device, and they just, you know, they leave them there dead, you know. But for us, as soon as we hear silence, we're calling up, what are you doing? <laughs> we want to hear noise, you know, we want to hear them doing stuff and all that. But I think that just comes in because we understand that, like, when they're silent, they're on their devices. And if it's not schooling, if it's schooling time's already finished, then they're on their, I don't know, watching, you know, YouTube clips or watching a movie. And then it's like, oh, no. Nah. That's not being productive of, of the, the time that you got. You have to be doing something. I'll ride your bike outside. Because during lockdown, you got to remember our kids are less active. When they're less active, they stay out more, they eat more, and then they become lazy. So when they go to school, 
they st- their, their routine is broken where they go to school, they play, they learn, they play, they learn. And then some of them who play sports, that uses up all that energy. So when they go to bed, it's like bed, you know? And we got some kids who like, one of our, um, our oldest one who likes to push the boundaries and, and staying up late, but he's the worst <laughs> in, like, in the morning. He's the worst. He's just like moping around. I was like, hey, look, that's what happens, son. You, when, you're tired. when you're tired, you know? It's harder mm. to learn. It's harder to do anything. Well, you know, I, I'm yeah. guilty of that as yeah. an adult myself when I've watched too much Netflix yeah. in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> It's always harder to manage when you're tired and you're grumpy. Um, yeah. And, you know, as a parent, you're yeah. there. Well, that's, you know, it's our job to put those boundaries in place yeah. um, mm. so that they hopefully learn, yeah. you know, um, good habits, which I'm yeah. sure and later in life they will adapt and form to their own. But, you know, yeah. we can only try our mm. best to instill what we can now. Hmm. In, in talking about communication, because um, I hear you talked about routine and how you um, like navigate the homeschooling in space, and how do you communicate with the children? Um, so I spend most of my time with the four younger ones because they are much more, you know, they, they definitely require um, more hands on, especially yeah. with navigating a device. Um, most of their work is actually done offline Um, and um, again I'm not a teacher I'm actually a trained dental therapist um, prior to children so Mm -hmm. teaching's never you know like it's not my wasn't my career choice Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah it's all new navigating this space really Um, and it's trying to get that balance between where they're at and of course we've got nine so they're all at a different stage they're all Mm. at different capabilities too Mm. um and so yeah keeping an eye on the little ones in particular um but also it's it's also monitoring what the older ones are up to because they can self-manage um but they're the ones that you you know you hear it's quiet and then it's like, actually, are you doing your work or are you on mm. this game or, you mm. know, watching this on YouTube? Mm. Um, so, again, we've set the boundaries of school yeah. is 9 till 12 mm. with a morning tea break. Mm. Um, and then, you know, if they get their set work done or, you know, attempt at least a good amount, then come lunchtime, it's free play games outside whatever it is that they want to do um Mm. outside they can or lego or whatever it is um Mm. but if they haven't then school continues or yeah yeah Mm. thank you and um is there any advice that you give to the parents to help their children um who are experiencing low mood anxiety or disrespectful behaviors during lockdown? I think from a a teacher and a dad perspective, you know, like it's almost like, okay, well, well, I can comment on the under 12 because I've got under 12. Okay, if things are going like that, you know, take them out on an adventure, I reckon, you know, go for a walk, a big long walk somewhere, you know, well, and then again, it's just trying to navigate the point where, I mean, trying to um, identify the point where, okay, they've got a lot of energy. You know, there's energy there. as either a lot of energy or no energy. So no energy because of lack of sleep, lack of this or, like, or lack of, of brain stimulation. Like, you know, basically, whether it's through communication or through their, their, their Chromebooks or, um, and they're just making sure that we can gauge in the terms of like, okay, are you bored? Are you had enough? Or, or where it's at? And then just take them do something exciting. Like, so like when we went down the, the, the levels, I started taking my um started taking all the kids to um to go put the net down, you know, to go catch some fish. And then that there, it's like, you know, the different times of the tide that they have to get up, you know, to, to go out and put it down in dawn and then wait to so the kids but that became their new um 
I was, I was, their new fix, they came like excited. They were like, Dad, are we going to put the net down? I put the net. Oh, after schooling, we've got to do a schoolwork first. Got to make sure you get a bed. So it's almost dangling a carrot to go, we'll go put the net out. But once you get that done, yeah. once you get that done, yeah. and then, but then we go get the net, we get fish and all that. Then it's the next phase. So for them, they're actually already doing what they didn't like doing in the beginning just to get that just to get that like that, that um, the reward of going out. But when they go out, they're actually learning more again how to put the net, come looking at the tides, um, where to lay it. And also when you catch the fish, what are you going to do? You're going to gut it and all this. And then from there, cleaning the net. So they're doing that and extra. So instead of just going, I know for me, instead of just going, oh, the focus is just inwards just to the child, this, this, and this, maybe look outwards and go, okay, we'll try this. You know, get them attracted to, to the outdoors or, or something that's within the boundaries of our of our bubbles and our and our um, current condition. But making sure that there's something there that's not the main thing. Because we've got to remember that's nine weeks that we've been <laughs> like this. You know, and of course our kids are yeah. if the adults are feeling mm -hmm. the toll of it. Imagine our kids who haven't been stimulated, who haven't been, who haven't had their social interaction. You know, to actually. Yeah. Not so much vents, but just to, you know, just to release that bit of energy out there. Yeah. yeah. Nine hours are probably the worst, or, you know, like, they protest the most mm. if we've given them extra time on devices. Mm. So, you know, like, if we've gone, actually, like, if it's me and I've gone, I just need another hour, and, and they've gone, oh, they've stayed on. And then it's when you go to take it away after a prolonged period or, you know, a longer period, it, that's when we find the negative, like yeah. negativity, because we know as adults how addictive technology is and how addictive these screens are and the endorphins and all the things, you know, that go along with it scientifically, that when you're, you know, that's when I see it in my kids is when, you know, um, mm. so I know that for that hour of peace that I needed, there's actually consequences to that. And am I, you know, am I prepared to yeah. carry on with that? Or do I need to, again, put my needs aside or, and it's hard, it's tough because people are out there working, they're trying yeah. to manage jobs and manage meetings and, and all these things. It's, it's a really tough time out there to you know especially for those that are working and then also trying to be parents and teachers you know that's yeah. the million hats that we're mm. taking on <laughs> wow uh, that's a very um it was a very great insight um emma about the negative um protest that yeah. you experience is when they are prolonged on the devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they just want to stay. Some parents would make the mistakes of giving it back to them because they protest, mm -hmm. but giving back the device, thinking that that will be the soothing part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the consequences that will kick back, it's actually harder and harder each time that they mm -hmm. are prolonged um, with their devices. Yeah. So, um, what an insight on that. Um, but the final question that I'll come to tonight, you know how it's actually, there's a, 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 a saying that it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. And I'm sure that even though I hear the conversation that you're saying about the way you raised your children, I'm aware, Emma, that your, your mom, your sister have also taken a lot of responsibility. So is, um, and your siblings, so is um, Loma's, siblings and mom have taken um, responsibilities as well to give a hand um, to support you and your family. Um, what do you think that we should do as a community to support each other in a parenting journey during COVID-19? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. I think, I mean, we're, we're in a really, I mean, you know, especially Auckland at the moment with, I mean, for us, extending our bubble, we're already 11 people. So it's even meeting another family with, you know, two adults and two kids. We're well and truly over max capacity. And I imagine that is a lot, is similar for many um, 
mixed families and, and big island families. So for us, it is really hard because I think as a village, we do need each other and mm. we need connections with other people that we trust other people that, you know, especially for a mother's point of view and keeping us healthy and mind, body and soul, you know, humans are made for connection. Um, and I think that's something that that's where we or where I've struggled over this lockdown is missing missing that yeah um and as a community and and as parents I really do think that we need it and it's the kids that need it too like that that social interaction with other people and um is so important so yeah I mean we're a little bit um restricted to yeah. what we can and can't do but I my advice would be to definitely try and meet up and um outside <laughs> in your bubbles um yeah, yeah. to share because it is about sharing your experiences and sharing your highs and sharing your lows mm. what's working what's not um because when we do share we can go oh maybe we can try that or oh I haven't done yeah. that yeah. um yeah. and all oh, that's worth giving it a go yeah. yeah. And, and I think, like, being like Harris saying, oh, sorry, some, sorry, one of the kids at the door. But, I, like, I'm um, like Emma was saying before, it's just like, yeah, it is, it, it's, it's difficult in a way because we are social beings, you know, like as yes. humans, we, we, we like to socialize, we talk and communicate. Yeah. And under the conditions, you know, I hope it doesn't, um, you know, there is other forms of communicating. Like right now, you know, you can, you know, ring other parents or Zoom other parents and have, and have like little um, vent sessions and <laughs> talk about how you, your kids yeah. and talk about, um, um, oh. yeah, and talk about, um, you know, the, the, the whatever is the, the, the pros and cons. I don't know, I'm not too sure if I like saying pros and cons, but it's almost like, okay, how can we develop our kids more? Or how can we, you know, mm. and it's and it's and it's quite difficult, but at the same time, it can be done because technology yeah. has made it easier to communicate. But yeah, yeah. I know with 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 um with our you know, human beings and adults, we need that physical face to face and yeah. and and also you know being able to communicate like that. Mm. But again, it's finding the like minded people that are on the same wavelength, and also you know it doesn't have to be like all you know same sort of people, but it's just like having the same values, having the same morals and ethics to actually go, oh, yeah, no, my parents is not that flesh. And I know for us, man, we're always, always looking out, like, okay, how can we improve or how can we do this better? Yeah. You know, it's almost like thinking smarter rather than harder in yeah. terms of going, okay, we can, we can make this work, but to suit us. or yeah. you know. And I know now, with, like, in our current situation, there's a lot of things that's limited us from doing, but we just make the most of it and then just within the boundaries of, of, of our situation. Yes. Mm. I certainly agree with you, um, Loma and Emma, in terms of like socially connected. Mm. Um, the other night we had a program with um, Dr. Edwin Imao, who's a psychiatrist from the Waikato Hospital. Mm. And he talks about how he struggles with the word social distance. Mm. And he said, psychiatrist is encouraging us to be socially connected, mm. but physically distant. Yeah. So he's saying that he's, he's hoping that they could change the language because the language shaped the way you think. Yeah. Um, and he was hoping that it could be changed to be socially connected. Yeah. And physically distant. Yeah. During this COVID-19. Mm. And um, one of the things that I picked up from what you said, um, Loma, it's about being innovations in your parenting style. Mm. Yeah. And the way you parent, you also mentioned that, Emma, as the, you've been innovations about it. But you're probably aware that it's very interesting because your children is actually from um, under 12. Mm. Yeah. And it is, um, according to psychology, it's 11 upwards that you started to enter into this adolescence transition ah. and, uh, <laughs> and it's a slightly different style of parenting in that age group yeah. and one of the problems that i encountered with as a therapist is when parents deal with their adolescence as if that they were from zero to not to, to 11. 
Yeah. yeah. They were hoping that they will still tell their, their, their kids to go to bed, 7.30 bedtime, and this, 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 <laughs> as if that they were from zero. You know, that, that same parenting style yeah. from zero to 11, that they wanted to implement it from 12 onwards. onwards. And you probably have already having that, you, you're entering into that space now. And you probably have an awareness of the differences that requires to be in the space. Yeah. So in, about adapting, isn't it? And and yes. changing course and yeah. learning, yeah. learning, because we've all, you know, we we learn every day, you know. Yes. Yes. What's and that's actually a great learning as well, for you to be able to bring your learning from your own parents by your parents. <laughs> And you revolve that and change that and you prune it. Maybe yeah. that's another word that I like using. You're oh, pruning yeah. it to make it fit, fit yeah. for purpose. Yeah. You know? And um, yes, there's so much um, wealth of insights that I've heard so far from um, your words. Was there be um, last words for you, from you for our audience this evening? Um, well, I always like that saying, and I know it's been overused quite a lot lately, but it is to be kind to yourself, you know, like yeah. as from a mother's point of view that, um, you know, again, in a world where we see glimpses into other people's lives, you know, yeah. so much more that um, knowing that you are doing your best and that yeah. your best is good enough and yeah. Um, your kids know no different and you know um, we're all imperfect beings and if we just you know it's that whole have a look it reassess if something's not working try something new move forward and just yeah always moving forward looking forward um, and yeah yeah I think I think just for mine this uh, parting point there is just basically you yeah, don't get stuck in, in the whole Oh, parenting per se to fit a, a, a box, but parenting per se to fit how you're moving within that box, whether that box is square, rectangle, and has no end, but you're just moving, you just keep moving <laughs> instead of going, yeah, we're going to do this, do this. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, there's, there's something that's not going to be right there. Well, you know, so parent in a way that's like, okay, it's ever evolving and developing. But as your kids, you know, as, as your kids evolve, um, evolve and, and develop and all that, that's where we, we're going to parent it. Like how you're saying before that, that the 11 and up, yeah, we're encountering one of those, but soon it'll be nine of those. And we're, we're, we're going into unknown waters. And, you know, like I said in the beginning, we're semi-pros at the under. Now we're going to go in the over soon. And then that's, yeah. the, that's a really scary part. But at the same time, when you set your foundation pretty solid, then you can go, okay, we've got a base to work from. And having that base is really comforting to actually know there's, uh, like they say, you draw the line in the sand, there's the line in the sand and we work that way from it. You know, you're not recreating any lines anyway. We've already got our baseline and we're just basically moving forward from that. Mm. And that's actually bring our interview, um, Loma and Emma this evening into our closure. Um, even I have learned so much just listening to you. And also, I just love your energy in the space. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've got no kids here, they all have And it's not just because of the way. Sorry, Emma? I said we can actually hear ourselves talk and think <laughs> without them here. <laughs> Yeah, but also it's not just your energy on the in interview. It is just about your energy in raising your children, mm -hmm. revolving, you know, revolving in, in your parenting style to make it fit for purpose. Yeah. And I love the fact how you have, like you said, Loma, a baseline. Yeah. You have a baseline that you set your, your, your foundation in raising your children. At the same time, you were also prepared to change and to twist and to tweak to make it fit for purpose. Yeah. 
-hmm. And also that is not just a hands-on of dealing with your kids for now. You also have like a, a forward view in yeah. terms of like, if I'm not gonna discipline them today for mm -hmm. that half an hour only for the device, mm -hmm. tomorrow I'm gonna bear the consequences of that. <laughs> and you are constantly asking yourself that am I prepared to face the consequences tomorrow? You know, it's a parenting style that it's very visionary and very practical in its own right. Mm -hmm. and, and that I do give it up to you and a very sincere thank you. Um, to you and also all our audience and all those that are listening to us. And thank you to Foundation North for sponsoring this, this program that it will benefit our, our families. And thank you. Malo Alvito. Malo. Malo Sane. Thank you.